Hello there ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the Common Sense Guys channel. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different because I'm feeling a little bit under the weather myself today. You know, just from staying in all the time, looking at Twitter and all that sort of good stuff. You know, doing the social distancing, listening to the government and all that sort of stuff. But while being on Twitter, I apparently can't help but be called racist, xenophobic and bigoted even when I am trying to look after the NHS, even when I am listening to everything that the government's told me about clapping for the NHS and all that type of stuff. I'm sure that you guys have heard about the you clap for me now hashtag that's going around about this video that has been put forward by a gentleman called Tez that was penned by somebody as well that he knows himself that is about People that voted for Brexit, or that type of situation, or that type of inkling, or anybody that just wants a form of immigration control that isn't just for mass immigration or complete and utter open borders, apparently they're all hypocritical for supporting anything to do with that because somehow you're stopping people from coming into the country that would actually be a part of the NHS, essential workers, and so on and so forth. Now that I have been able to lay the foundation for this, let's play the whole video in its entirety, and we will go through the video in its entirety. Let's all have fun, shall we? So, it's finally happened. That thing you were afraid of. Something's come from overseas and taken your jobs. So, first of all, I was kind of thinking that you were trying to use this as a point of being able to talk about the coronavirus and the actual virus, but in actual fact that you're trying to have legitimate concerns turned into people equating other people as a virus. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but that's pretty scummy and really disingenuous in general, to be honest with you. Most, if not all, people would not classify anybody that is emigrating as a virus. But please, carry on creating that straw man and carry on creating that dissidence of hate and realising that you don't actually understand the arguments that people have been making for literally years that you keep losing to in almost every election that has happened since or referendum since you keep losing. Is that because you're not actually taking into consideration what people are actually talking about and you keep misrepresenting what people are talking about so that you can classify it just as racism so that you can push it or sweep it under the carpet. I wonder, I wonder what it could actually be. Made it unsafe to walk the streets. Kept you trapped in your home. A dirty disease. Your proud nation gone. Now, again, I know that this is a case of them trying to do a double entendre, basically saying one thing and actually meaning something else, or having a double meaning as you're talking. They're trying to conflate with the idea of people talking about the virus with the idea of people talking about immigration. Again, carrying on from the connotations beforehand of talking about the virus being the immigrants, that's what they're trying to do here. Trying to put the idea across that people actually are scared of this, scared of these things in the same way as they are with immigrants. Not in the actual fact of understanding that people are not scared of immigrants. They're not scared of immigration in general. They're not scared of these types of situations. They're scared of individuals that may be part of immigrants or immigration or even people that are already here it has nothing to do with being scared of immigration 
there are legitimate concerns that happen and can happen with the idea of mass immigration, same as there is lots of economic points that happen with mass immigration. But yet, still trying to conflate with the idea that if anybody has any legitimate concerns about immigration, you are still trying to conflate the idea that if they have these legitimate concerns, that they are comparing these people to a virus because that's the way apparently people that want to talk about or have legitimate concerns about immigrants and immigration in general, mass immigration, apparently think of these immigrants, immigration and mass immigration. That somehow these people equate these immigrants, this mass immigration as a virus. I don't understand where you actually get that comparison. Maybe you should stop self-analyzing so hard because you seem to be doing a better job at demigrating yourself than actual racists. But please, carry on. You seem to be doing a really good job of actually taking into consideration and concerns of others. But not me. Or me. Or me. Or me. No, you clap for me now. You cheer as I toil. Bringing food to your family. Bringing food from your soil. Propping up your hospitals. Not some foreign invader. See, this is where I think that people generally have a disconnect with your side of the aisle and possibly my side of the aisle. And I generally mean in the people that want a national type of borders and people that are open for mass immigration and no borders whatsoever, their freedom of movement, and so on and so forth. That's where I think most people are on the divide of when it comes to immigration, where some people would like to have the idea of national borders, being able to monitor who comes in and who comes out, so on and so forth, and the other side, your side, I believe, that would be a point of let's have open borders, let's have freedom of movement, let's not monitor anybody, anybody can go anywhere. Which is absolutely fine. I understand your side of the argument. But you always seem to mischaracterize the other side of that argument. Yeah, sure, there are people that would classify some or most or even all immigrants as foreign invaders. Most people that actually have genuine criticisms of the immigration system or mass immigration as a total wouldn't actually call most immigrants foreign invaders. The only times that some people would call them in foreign invaders is simply because of their background. Say for instance, actually being a ex-ISIS fighter for instance. Can we actually have a conversation about ISIS fighters or other Islamic terrorists that are coming back into the countries or going throughout the whole of Europe and actually have a conversation about what to do. Should we monitor them? Should we not monitor them? Do we need to know who they are and what they are? What they've done? What they haven't done? Is that not something that we can do? And by the way, that doesn't transmute or go over to everybody that comes from a particular nation, but actually comes from the point of actual intelligence and following up that intelligence. Can we not have a conversation about that without actually being called racist or having that connotation put down onto us? That somehow that people that have legitimate concerns about who and who is not coming into the country, comparing them to thinking that people are viruses. Because all in all, that's what this video is doing. For anybody that has any criticism towards any form of person that is trying to get into the country or any form of immigration, mass or not, is apparently now comparing immigrants singular to a virus. Where did we go wrong on the public discord of talking to people, eh? And the village driver. Teacher. Lifesaver. Don't say go home. Don't say, not here. You know how it feels for home to be a prison. You know how it feels to live in fear. So you clap for me now. So for the people that are actually wondering why so many people are so bent out of shape, put out by this video, is because the genuine gesture 
of the whole country in support of all of essential workers from all backgrounds, from the delivery drivers, from the people working out in the farms, from the shopkeepers, the grocers, all those types of people, and especially the people in the NHS, all of them, regardless of backgrounds or immigration status, all of them were being clapped by almost the whole nation. But yet, something that was taken to mean love, to mean acceptance, to mean being a part of the United Kingdom. For some reason, you want to try and throw that back at the United Kingdom, the people of the United Kingdom, for doing something in that sense of genuinism to try and make political point scoring in the face of people dying in a crisis. You want to politically point score the idea of immigration, the idea of Brexit. You can't let things go. You have to keep making political point scoring issues out of genuine caring for other people and support of those people that are caring for those people. But you can't even let that go. You have to jump on a bandwagon and taint it to make it be some other political point and completely destroy the genuosity and the genuineness of that love and acceptance and actually turn people probably against you just because that you've made this. All this love you are bringing. But don't forget when it's no longer quiet. Don't forget when you can no longer hear the birds singing. Or see clear waters that I cross for you to make lives filled with peace and bring peace to your life too. Come, all you Gretas, you Malalas, you immigrants. So if there was any doubt whatsoever in your mind that the poem in this self or the video as it is was trying to draw on the comparison that if you or I or anybody had any problems, issues, or legitimate concerns about our form of immigration or lack thereof control of immigration for whatever political reasons, you are not actually having legitimate concerns about any of that it is all to do with the fact that you classify all immigrants as apparently viruses how you would use and classify them as colourful language, as foreign invaders, so on and so forth. That's really the reasons why so many people are going to be so annoyed at this video. And so many people are going to counter that annoyance with their own annoyance of saying, the only reason why you have done this is because you, for some reason, have took offence to it. Because you obviously are the ones that think that you do classify these as people that are viruses or foreign invaders. That's the point. I don't. And that's the reason why I will be against it. And the fact that you think that if people like me or others that do have legitimate concerns about immigration and the immigration system think anything similar to what you portray them as is legitimately concerning to me. You are trying to paint anybody that has any concern of immigration, of racists, or people that have any concerns of select immigrants, as in people that have fought for ISIS, for instance, and trying to portray those concerns or those individuals as the whole. And that's absolutely amazing to me. You try to push off this idea of your acceptance and understanding so many other people's diverse ideas, but yet you won't even take the time to understand people's leg legitimate concerns about mass immigration. Not even forms of immigration as a total or how people are coming in, but the idea of mass immigration. Anybody that wants to talk about that idea to you guys, is now racist, now thinks of all humans that are immigrants as viruses, as the comparison that you decided to draw up in this connotation of your poem, 
And if you ever thought that there was such a disconnect of why Labour themselves, or the hard left of Labour, are so out of touch on why they lost their heartlands, is due to this. You can't have a legitimate political talk. You have to paint them as something that you despise. Because they can't have legitimate concerns that people would want to restrict access into their country. No. Anybody that wants anything to do with that is apparently racist and wants to compare everybody as a virus. If you got to the end of the videos, ladies and gentlemen, however you may identify yourself as, I just wanted to take this quick couple of minutes just to explain my point of view on this. As I feel that I'm going to have to, as I'm pretty sure that any point is going to be taken out of context and cut up and misused. Most people have legitimate concerns when it comes to immigration. Most people that do have concerns with immigration are not to the point of saying, well, we don't like you just because you're an immigrant. Most people. Now, there are people out there that do have that aspect, that ideology. I'm not going to deny that. There are some. But when you try and paint everybody that does have legitimate concerns as those people, you automatically push those people away from being able to have discord with yourselves. And that's where the disconnect has come from in this video. And why you call people that voted for Brexit, for instance, or at least imply as racist, or people that classify them as calling immigrants viruses and comparing them to viruses. That's where the disconnect comes from. Because you do not have these legitimate conversations with people, and maybe they are wrong, maybe I'm wrong, maybe you're wrong. But the point is, we need to have those conversations and not just brandish and brand these people in a certain way because it's easier for you to dismiss their legitimate concerns. Now, that doesn't mean that all oh, you need to go and talk to every white nationalist and then actually adhere to what their points are. But you do actually need to listen to why people have their legitimate concerns and then make the assumption afterwards. Because when you make the assumption to begin with, you're not actually even giving that person a chance to explain anything. Can you imagine if that was done to you on the reverse? And if it is done to you on the reverse, how that makes you feel and how you doing it to other people doesn't bring those people into you and understand your point of view or ideology. It actually pushes them further away. Because us being as human as we are, all of us, generally when we feel that we're not heard or you're misrepresenting us, generally don't want to have a conversation with those types of people. And then we misunderstand, misconstrued, and we don't actually get to the focal point of people's legitimate concerns. And that's where we get this political disconnect that we do at the minute. And that's why I wanted to do this video. Not simply because I feel that I needed to criticise the point, but I did need to criticise the point because of the disconnect. Because you classify these people that have these concerns overall as being racist, as being xenophobic, as thinking that all of these people, every single one of them, would classify people as viruses. That would classify them as not being worthy or good enough to come into the country. And so on and so forth. But until you actually have those conversations, how do you know how somebody thinks and feels? You always classify and carry on that that's what you're trying to aim for, to give everybody credence. But as soon as somebody says something that you don't politically align with or politically agree with, you shut them down, you push them away, you tar them as something so people don't have the discourse with them. Maybe it's time we actually listen to people's points of views. And if those views are racist afterwards, we then call them racist rather than calling everybody racist that you disagree with. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. Thank you very much for liking and sharing and subscribing to the video and to the channel if you do. If you do feel like helping me in any which way that you can, all the links for that are down below. Thank you very much. and I look forward to hearing from you guys all again real soon. So take care and bye-bye for now.